Well, hey guys, welcome back to the cabin. I thought I would cover today a little bit on locating faults in wiring. Um, I spent about 30 years with AT&T as a repairman and then cable repairman and cable splicer. So I'm going to try to share with you today uh, some basic knowledge on fault locating. So I basically have uh, three wires right here. This is called one side open. This is called both sides open. This is called a short. And if you wanted to say this side is open. Um, and these, any of these can happen physically like this. They can happen during lightning when the lightning blows them in two. Or they can happen at a connection somewhere that actually breaks down. Now the other type of fault is where you would have one side of your wire here actually grounded somewhere. If you were to take the leads on your ohm meter and basically drive them into the ground. What you're doing is you're reading the resistance between the two leads and the greater the resistance uh, the greater uh, the, the least your number is going to be. In other words zero is the greatest resistance. Then you can go all the way up to infinity if you're just barely reading any earth ground. So a lot of times I hear my kitchen light or my porch light or my receptacle whatever doesn't work it must be shorted out. Um, could possibly be. It could be open or it could be grounded or it could be a combination of all of those. Um, so you don't really know unless you um, have a way to fault find and to be able to do that you need an ohm meter. Now I've got an ohm meter right here that I used to use. This is an analog meter because it actually has a needle. On this meter right here you can see all the way over to this side basically is zero. This side over here is infinity. So if I were to take my leads and touch them together and set this on ohms, I should see that meter deflect all the way over because that would be shorted out. Okay, so how do I tell what type of fault I have? First thing I want to do is disconnect it from a power source. Um, you don't want to get <laughs> popped or fried in the meantime while you're testing. So go and pull your breaker um, that's going to that wire uh, so that you take off all of the power. Then what you want to do is take out your ohm meter. Now what I did on the other end of this line right here just to represent a fault, I have got the ground wire which is the copper wire right here uh, in the middle and I've got the white wire shorted together and grounded down here below the porch so that I can kind of represent um, a um, bus bar basically on a power panel um, you've got your uh, ground rod outside is connected to the ground on the panel on the inside and that's where all the white wires connect as well. I left the, white wi or the black wire undone down there so that we could look at it basically like an open. Alright, so first thing I want to do is I want to take my ohm meter and I want to turn it on ohms and I want, let's see, let's start with the highest scale because I don't know how much of a ground I've got down there because I basically only stuck it in about two inches. But anyway, I've got my meter set right here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my black, which would represent the uh, ground or the neutral, and I'm going to touch it to ground right here. Then I'm going to take these clips. Now the clips come in different types. Uh, this happens to have the sharp pointed probes. Um, and I don't have another set that will actually fit this one. It's got alligator clips. But I'm going to take the other side right here and just basically touch it to that. And what you will see is a solid short. So let me show you. Okay, on this meter, this is the highest setting for ohms. All right, uh, like infinity. So what I'm going to do again, like I said, I'm going to take this black probe. I'm going to touch the neutral or the ground. Now I'm going to take my other lead and touch the white wire. See how that went to zero? Because they are physically shorted together on the other end. So the closer to zero you read, that means it is more of a solid connection. So right there is a solid connection. Those two are shorted together. So in that case, what I would do probably is go about halfway, what I figure would be halfway from uh, the panel box to my outlet, my wire, whatever it is that I'm testing and I would try to take that wire and break it in two and look in each direction and test it from there. Now a lot of times what I would do is when I was uh, take a wire loose, you know, being in the cable we may be 
two miles away from the residence or the business and what I would do is I would take the wire and I would short both ends. Let's say I was looking for a ground. Well I would short both ends. That way if I went halfway and cut that same wire in two and if I looked back towards where I had just came from I should, sh should see the short and no ground involved. If I looked on towards the customer, what we would call the field, if I could see the ground there, then I know that it was between me and the customer, so then I could move another half to another halfway point. Now once I got halfway there and I put those back together where I had just tested it, I'll be able to see my short, right, in one direction, see the ground in the other direction. If I cut it in two at that point, if I went another halfway point, cut it in two and I didn't see the ground, but I seen my short, then that must mean the, sh the ground is back in this direction, right? So then I could go to ground, take one of my leads right here and go to a ground and then take my other lead and touch the wire. Even though they were shorted, I should still see a ground because it is grounded somewhere and that's the fault that I'm looking for and I've got to find it. The short was to just tell me that I was on the correct um, pair of wires. Alright, so what I would do is I would basically put that together and go back towards where I came from about halfway and just basically keep working it down in half until hopefully I could find that wire. Now chances are it was man-made somehow. It was in a terminal where corrosion may have happened or something like that. Very seldom did it happen underground unless the splice went bad and started uh, taking on water and stuff like that and everything was corroded and of course the water being wet around the cable would be grounded too. And then of course you know you'd have to dig it up and fix it. So a lot of times if I was in a house or in a business where I uh, let's say was looking for a ground or something like that but it didn't have a physical ground to be able to connect to so that I could take one of my leads let's say that um, my neutral wire right here and my white wire didn't have a ground even at the panel. Uh, a lot of times what I would do is I would run a, I had a springy cord that was about 20 feet long, run it out a window, take a screwdriver and basically just put my clip around it like this, job it in the ground, run the other end of that wire on the inside. That way I could actually take one of my uh, probes right here and actually touch it to a ground and then take the other one and touch it to my wires right here to see if I actually had a ground because you have to be touching ground somewhere in order to test for it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to test this white wire to see if it's grounded. Now in this situation here, remember I grounded this neutral wire in the ground down there below the porch. So what I will do is I will touch this to ground and then I will touch this side to the white wire and then we will read the ohm meter. Okay, so with the black wire touching the neutral of my cable and I'm going to take the red probe and touch the white conductor and right there you've seen some movement we've got zero ohms so that is grounded between me and the bottom of the porch which like I said I got it stuck in the ground down there so that is how you test for a ground so you say Richard I'm not reading a ground and I'm not reading a short but it still doesn't work then possibly it could be open one side or it could be open both sides. This example right here you've got one side open, this example right here you've got both sides open. Since I have both of these actually connected down there just for an example, we're going to test the black wire to see if it's open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my probe and touch it to the ground right here. Alright, remember this is the white. All right, Those are shorted together and grounded down there below the porch. Now I'm going to touch, touch the black. There it is right there. Nothing is happening. You see that? Nothing. So there is no connection between me and the ground down there. So a while ago when I said that I always made a connection on the other end from where I started uh, with a short just so that I knew that I was on the right pair, this is what I would see if I had continuity with that black wire to another wire that I decided to use, I would read basically a short. But since I don't read anything like that, right here I'm touching it again, I don't read anything, that tells me that the, that the side of this black wire is open. So on one end what I'm doing is I'm basically creating um, a situation whether it is 
a physical ground with, a, with my wires that I'm wanting to locate or if I'm shorting them together or whatever I'm doing I'm creating uh, a scenario so that I pretty much know that it was physically made and that I'm looking at the right wire. Um, the other way to do that is to use a tone which I will show you that in another video on how to tone wires uh, throughout a house um, using a toner and a probe but this is basically about fault finding with an ohm meter. We're going to test for a short because what I did was is I took this black wire as well and barely stuck it in the ground out there along with this white wire and the neutral. So what I will do is I will take my probe and touch this side right here and then touch the other side and what you see is not solid because I barely stuck it in there. So this is a high resistance short between me and the porch out side down there where I stuck those in the ground. Right there you see nothing, touch this side again and you see a high resistance short between these two leads. So folks, you know it's not really hard, this is just basic fault finding, it's not really hard to find things like this with both sides open like this, like I said chances are on one end I would take two of them short them together that way I could actually look at it with my own meter and know that I was looking in the direction that I started and then basically be testing the other side looking for an open on it looking for a short basically the same way what like we just did or looking one side open as well so I hope that this helps you like I said this is just basic fault finding um, but that way you'll be able to say hey my lights or whatever it is don't work because my line is open or because one side is open because they're shorted or because it's grounded and that way you should be able to locate and find your fault with uh, using a digital multimeter or an analog multimeter. I actually prefer uh, the analog because I can watch that needle uh, deflect. Now this one does have a tone on it right here. You hear that short. So you could be in the room and actually short your in and walk in another room and as long as you could hear that tone you knew when you were on your wire. Be sure and stay tuned uh, for another video that I've got that's going to be coming up on how to locate wires um, with a probe and a toner. That also works for electric fences. It wasn't long ago that I helped my neighbor. Um, he said that his cows were getting out that he couldn't figure out what was wrong with the fence so I disconnected it at the charger I looked at both sides to see if they were shorted I looked at one side individually and then the other side to see if they were grounded and then I left them loose right there and we started running the wire because we knew we could actually see the physical wire run um, and I would break it into and I would look in both directions to see what kind of fault I had and then we would run it and try to find it and as soon as we got that repaired, we would just continue on. Anyway, folks, I hope that helps you in doing some basic fault finding on troubles that you may have around your place. Guys, we thank you for watching. We certainly appreciate it. We look forward to seeing you back up here at the cabin again next time.